वेलकम बैक टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ फिक्सीज फूड वार्ता सीजन टू फूड फ्रंटियर्स द पॉडकास्ट दैट ब्रिंग्स यू स्टोरीज एंड इनसाइट्स फ्रॉम विजनरी लीडर्स हु हैव बिल्ट समथिंग एक्स्ट्रॉडिनरी फ्रॉम द ग्राउंड अप आई एम यू होस्ट प्रतीक वांगन एंड टुडे वी हैव द प्लेजर ऑफ टॉकिंग टू मिस सना बेक्टर परवांडा को फाउंडर ऑफ जोइट्स कस्टर्ड अ ब्रांड दैट नॉट ओनली डिलाइटेड आर टेस्ट बर्ड्स बट हैज ऑल्सो बीन फीचर्ड इन पब्लिकेशन लाइक द न्यू इंडियन एक्सप्रेस जी क्यू वोग एंड कॉन्टनार्ड traveler today sana is here to share her entrepreneurial journey and the lessons she's learned along the way welcome to the show sana thank you so much for having me prateek sana before we dive into the nuts and bolts of zoet custards let's start with the very beginning what sparked the idea of starting your own business was entrepreneurship always in your plan or did it evolve over time so i'll start with a simpler answer uh, entrepreneurship was definitely always in my plans I just didn't know what uh, I would like to do, um, and when I came back from university in two thousand and fourteen, I decided that uh, I want to bring my grandmother's desserts that she used to make in our house to more people. And because my grandmother, Mrs. Rajni Bector, used to make these desserts in a very large format for parties, I couldn't figure out how to get that to people who don't want to have two liters of pudding. you know uh in mm-hmm. one go so so we came up with the idea to have desserts in small cups um i feel like we were the pioneers in doing that at the time that market didn't really exist in india and uh in that way i could get a flavor of my home actually very selfishly uh to my everyday life <laughs> you know yeah and to delhi and to other customers that's really amazing turning a simple idea into a full fledged business is not a small feat were there moments of self doubt when you were starting out and if so what helped you push through and how i think there are many moments of self doubt when you start a business especially in food because food is a very individual thing you know something you like maybe not something that i like um so it's it's interesting to see how customers kind of came together and really helped us uh establish ourselves in our neighborhood first in friends colony and we opened our first outlet in friends club and uh, it was a small outlet it's still there today and i really have to thank the support of our customers because doubt comes in many ways and forms you know you feel will this work will this new product work um do people even like this kind of desserts you know when there's such a strong market for indian sweets and cakes and so on but having those customer that customer base that is still with us till today it has been a great motivator for us um apart from that i also feel like people will have doubt in many ways and forms in their businesses um one thing i would definitely recommend everybody to align themselves with is why they're doing what they're doing finding a why is very important uh, over the years our why has evolved it should evolve it should change as you grow and today our why for instance i can share with you is to get really good quality uh, products and desserts in particular to more people we seen how the market has moved towards a lot of chemical ingredients a lot of compromised products and we want to get something that is wholesome that the whole family can enjoy and that doesn't have a long term impact on your health or you know it make you feel like oh i'm not doing something that is good for me dessert should make you feel happy all around <laughs> Yeah, so that's yes, the yes. idea we want to do. I love that you touch on the importance of having a support system. Zoet's custard has grown into a recognized brand, even featured into top tier publications. How did you take your initial vision and translate into a product that resonates with consumers today? To put it simply, why custards? Well, I mean, actually, uh, I don't think we are healthy in the conventional sense. We are just using good for you ingredients. we are doing desserts that are indulgent that is the core of what we do we want it to be a treat um one thing that definitely has helped translate is that we have tried to innovate in our products and create uh things that have two components one is comfort so we realize uh in just to touch upon custard a little bit more i realize that custard is something that not just me a lot of people have grown up eating at home you know sometimes uh, whenever our parents were um rush to make a dessert there would just be custard and fruit or something like that right so um we wanted to get an an elevated custard to the customer the custard that my grandmom and my mom used to bake for me was very different it's a signature recipe 
it is nothing like what you get in the market. We make everything from scratch. It's eggless and it's delicious on its own. Also, it's a complete dessert. Uh, and then from that point of comfort, we've decided to innovate. So get new flavors out there. So for instance, we do a really nice serum masu, which is of course very international. We do a very comforting food trifle, which is like a taste of home. So it's the balance of both. Uh, recently, we've just launched a new product, which is our baked keef. Um, mm. So it's a very uh, Indian product for our brand, but at the same time, we try to change it around by baking it. It's got a very set, uh, thick, creamy texture. Um, it's made with brown rice, not just because it's healthier, but it has a nice bite to it. So, um, you know, there are lots of interesting things that we keep playing around with. I think the customer today is very well-traveled, very aware. They know what they want. And also they know good from bad. You know, so that is something that we are, we are always aspiring to get great products with the same customer. Uh, that's helped us translate the vision, definitely. The other thing that was really fun for our brand was to create our stores. Um, our stores are this really fun representation of what the brand stands for. We don't take ourselves too seriously. It's a fun space. We do have some fun products in store that aren't available everywhere else, like our frozen custard, which is a custard soft serve, which is very unique and not available, I think, anywhere else in the world, probably just for us. Um, so there are a lot of interesting things like that that we're doing. Yeah. Building a brand identity is such an essential step. For our listeners, especially the budding entrepreneurs out there, what would you say are the top elements to focus on when building a brand from scratch like yours? I think the first thing is to find uh, what you'd like to stand for. When I said about purpose, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I remember, I'm paraphrasing, there's this very famous quote that everybody keeps uh, using that you don't remember what somebody said, but you remember how they made you feel. So I think a brand has to do the same thing. Uh, you, they might, a customer might not remember uh, the exact product they had, but they'll remember the experience they had engaging with your brand. You know, was it a good experience? Was it a positive experience? So I think everything starts from that. Um, recall and recognition in terms of branding in particular can also be a very interesting tool. So uh, we like to do a lot of fun things with our brand. We had tote bags for a while. Uh, we've done a lot of collaborations with uh, partners that matter to us. For instance, uh, for the last two, three years, we've been working with this NGO called Laksham, where we, uh, you know, did a lot of um, sort of awareness work and we raised some funds for the kids that they help. We did work with Plan India to help educate one girl uh, for Children's Day. And, uh, you know, so we raised funds to educate and actually fund uh, the education of one girl till 12th grade. So uh, these are smaller initiatives, but we feel like doing countless things like this on ground really helps as well um, and ties into what the brand stands for. On a more uh, macro level, I think what's been really interesting for us as a brand is to really be focusing on taste. Uh, our brand has grown completely on taste and tasting. We give a lot of samples. Please drop by us so you can taste everything. Everything is open to tasting. Uh, there is no restrictions on that because you feel that when you taste something, you really understand what it's about. That's such great advice. Now let's talk a little bit about the challenges because every entrepreneur ends up facing them. What are some of the key challenges that you faced while growing Zoet's Custard and how did you manage to navigate them? So I, I think the most unexpected thing that's happened in the last few years to any business owner is COVID. Um, yeah. You know, uh, I, for us, it was also quite an unexpected one because we had just decided to open a store, a, our first store, right, like first flagship store before COVID hit. And um, in that uncertainty, we suddenly found ourselves without the shop space and, of course, no idea if we can service our customers or not or if the business will survive. Um, I feel like that is probably one of the biggest challenges. For us, it was a very interesting time. We managed to turn that situation around and serve our customers throughout. We developed a whole new range of products in the bread category because mm -hmm. our customers uh, wanted access to good quality bread. Everybody was home. Um, and, you know, we strengthened our delivery systems. We were able to get safe and good products to people throughout COVID. And in fact, it helps us grow. So we actually opened our store in 2020 in COVID. Um, when nobody was really coming to the store, but we still opened it. And then, you know, slowly, slowly as restrictions ease, it was a great way 
for me i was in the store every day to meet all the customers and interact with them and uh, i think that really created a good opportunity the other side on the business side it really helped us uh, implement better systems so that custom, uh, so that our teams could at least on some days work remotely which in the bakery space is a little bit harder to do bakery in the third space and we also got technology involved quite early on since that was the early years of our business so uh, that was a very interesting uh, uh, period yeah. yeah scaling while maintaining quality is indeed a very common challenge for many food brands were there any specific setbacks some completely unexpected or exciting ones that you experience and how did you turn them into opportunities for yourself um so we always look at growing in terms of scale as an opportunity uh we don't see it as a challenge at all you know we kind of tend to take it head first and do what we can do with that uh i've been really fortunate to have a lot of technical knowledge from the kremika team from my father and my grandmother so on that side you know we've been able to grow and sustain that growth very very um, very well um that being said i think my piece of advice to people that are scaling up in their food business is to try to see what is the most important thing that they need and not try to do everything at once because it is very expensive and if you don't have guaranteed return on your investment you will end up losing a lot so it's good to do one step at a time um and not to feel anxious to go really fast i think in our generation there's this anxiety that in 5 years i have to have a 100 million dollar business and has to be funded and do all those things and yes that's possible uh very possible in today's landscape in india that but that being said that doesn't have to be everybody's journey small becomes big is something my granny always told me and look at her she made small big she started with the bakery in our house it's still there you know and she was a home baker she created a business out of that over years so sometimes small steps also lead to big change that's what my advice would be transparency and trust go a long way in consumer relationships now for the aspiring entrepreneurs listening what would be your key pieces of advice as they start their own journey um you know i'd like to start this with a story um during that covid time um i remember we did our first uh, rakhi gift boxes and they were really popular and suddenly we were um, kind of ambushed with orders and the delivery partner we were using was very good but they were also ambushed with orders so they really left us in a spot that day and rakhi as everybody knows is the time when you want your gifts in the morning and given that it was ice cream we couldn't deliver it a day before it had to be delivered that day so it was a very tricky situation and uh, we had a lot of customers that were frustrated and waiting for their orders to do their rakhi gifts right so uh, i remember uh, you know loading up a all whatever car i could find and going driving around all across delhi and delivering orders myself and uh, even then a lot of our orders were a little bit delayed because customers had orders from all across the city and while it wasn't technically our brand fault the delivery partners had left us hanging uh, we still took it personally and i we made i made calls to every customer who ordered and we sent them gifts from our side to apologize uh, even though the order had been delivered you know sometimes it's a really small thing it was supposed to be there at 11 it got there at 132 that was something we took really personally i'll never forget that moment we made sure that since then that every year we are be more prepared and everything is running very smoothly it was a learning curve for us but it was interesting to be able to be honest with the customers about what had happened and to take accountability we could have very easily said that it was the delivery guys fault but it was our choice to use that delivery team right so we had to take accountability and uh, that was a very interesting journey and i realized that when we take accountability with customers it builds long term relationships so instead of losing those customers i feel like most of them have stayed on with our brand and had a positive association with what we do um so that's an interesting way to build transparency within the brand i feel when a founder does that the rest of the team kind of takes that on and makes that part of the brand ethos so even with our team today if there is ever any issues or any problems which we really don't have luckily um the team kind of takes it personally and you know sometimes you'll just get feedback on a product which we tend to implement so it's very important to have a two way conversation with customers they are the reason brands grow 
uh, and I don't think any individual is less important than another individual when it comes to our brand. Fantastic advice. What mindset or practices have helped you to stay motivated through the tough times? Um, I honestly, that's a really tough question. I think we all have a lot of different practices uh, that we do. Uh, for me, it was always about people, the people that we, and still is, about the people that we work with. We have a, a team that has been with us for many, many years. Uh, and, you know, seeing people grow in their own lives is a great motivator for an entrepreneur. Because at the end of the day, one side is the product and getting customers happy products and so on. And the other side is the team that you're growing with. And when there's growth for those individuals that are working for you, that's a great motivator to keep a business going and to kind of make it work no matter what because you have people that are counting on you. Looking ahead, what exciting things are on the horizon for Zwet's Custard? Any plans you'd like to share with us? Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot happening and I, I can't share too much right away because we're, it's all in the work in progress. But one of the things we definitely are doing is opening a lot more outlets this year. Um, we're... We'll be at about 10 to 12 outlets by the end of the next financial year. And uh, of course, we'll be closer to more of our customers. So keep a lookout for that and definitely try our products. And, you know, you can drop me, a, drop me a direct message on Instagram or drop our brand a message. I reply to everything if they like the product or what the feedback is. That sounds really fantastic. We're excited to see how Zoet Custard evolves as a brand. As we wrap up, do you have any final words of wisdom for our listeners who are just starting their entrepreneurial journeys? I think one thing that my grandmother definitely said to me uh, stood out, you know, is that believe in whatever you want to do and don't worry about what other people say. When she started out, she had a lot of people that didn't believe in what she was doing or uh, thought it was something small and homely. But if your vision is bigger and if your dream is bigger, then nothing is going to stop you from achieving it. Thank you so much, Shana for sharing your journey and insights with us today. I'm sure our listeners are walking away with a ton of valuable advice. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Fixie Food Bartha Season 2. Don't forget to check out Zoet's Custard Co. for some delicious indulgence. Until next time, keep chasing your dreams and turning them into reality.